My name is Susan Novotny. I'm the uh, owner of the Book House of Stuyvesant Plaza and Market Block Books in beautiful downtown Troy. Right now we're at the Stuyvesant Plaza store and uh, we have been here since 1975 and um, we sell books, real books. Books that you can hold in your hand, crack open, cuddle up in a chair with those kind of books. I started out um, in the publishing industry. I was a sales rep for first Simon & Schuster and then for uh, Penguin, now Van Putnam. That was back in the 70s and the 80s. And uh, I sold books all over upstate New York and throughout New England. And um, after about 10 years of that peripatetic lifestyle, I decided I wanted to go to the other side of the counter and uh, sell books. And, so I went to work for the, uh, the bookstore here in this plaza and uh, I uh, eventually bought into the business and then bought the business out. And uh, so I have been here since, uh, as sole owner since 1991. And um, it's been uh, uh, an up and down history since then. Um, shortly after I purchased the store um, with a small business administration loan, uh, it was uh, uh, Barnes and Noble and Borders moved in and um, and the, literally the literary landscape of Albany, New York changed overnight as it did across the country because uh, that expansion uh, uh, into the area of the chains uh, took about 11 other independent bookstores uh, out of business. But the bookhouse was left standing. Uh, and through the 90s, it was, a, it was really a, a tough uh, uh, competitive, uh, battle for our market share in this town, but we, we survived. Um, part of the reason we survived was that the community came to our rescue. They said, we don't want you to go away, we want you to survive, and we want to spend our money here at this store. And uh, that's why we're here, because this, the community of Albany uh, has said they want us here and they're willing to come in and pay a little bit more than they might pay somewhere else uh, in order to uh, keep us afloat. Really the first and foremost thing that makes this place special is my staff people. And I have 22 uh, booksellers and um, of those 22, some of them have been with me for anywhere from 10 to 20 years. And we've, uh, we operate uh, like a family, an occasionally dysfunctional family, but uh, we uh, we have a good, a really good uh, relationship with each other, and we do all understand our mission here is to keep this store open. The store is just more than these four walls and the fact that we sell books. The store is us out in the community. Each one of us um, is. Uh, gives time to the community uh, on a personal basis. Uh, many of our staff people are volunteers with various uh, reading readiness, uh, literacy volunteers, um, the AIDS Council, uh, the League of Women Voters, uh, various, um, uh, um, you know, like the Women's Club, which tries to connect with the, the, the reading and literary community as well. Uh, I could go on and on. I, our list is very, very long of, um, of good works that we do outside the store. And we uh, had, had formed some, uh, you know, real solid connection with the literary community here, with the, not only the writing community, but the reading community. Um, we became uh, very involved with uh, uh, Bill Kennedy's New York State Writers Institute, so uh, bringing uh, famous authors and not so famous authors into town uh, on a regular basis uh, uh, set this store apart as uh, being, uh, a, and set Albany apart as being a kind of a mecca for great writers. Albany is, um, they like their local authors for sure. They like their William Kennedys and their Richard Russo's and their Russell Banks and uh, you know and their Peter Goldens and their Judy Barnes. They lo they do love their local authors and they do support their local authors. But on the whole, uh, Albany's a good, a very uh, ver they're a very voracious group of readers. Uh, one of the real calling cards here is um, is our staff picks section. 
and um, we're all voracious readers and people come in and they have a certain amount of money to spend, they have a certain amount of time to devote to reading and they don't really want to spend a lot of time uh, taking a gamble on a book that they might not like. So staff picks is the section they go to immediately um, to find books that they like the, that Margie read, read or Julia read or Susan Taylor read and then they come back and say I really like her selections I want to read another book like 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 the one I just read Susan Taylor is the one to guide me and uh, so it's a uh, uh, you know our communication with our readers that come in here is uh, is very intimate we we know what they like and they know what we like it used to be that you could run an independent bookstore um, just on on love, but you can't anymore. You have to be business minded first and foremost because you're not going to get any of the rest of it unless you have a good mind for business. And it is, after all, business. There are a lot of people out there that are toast um, because the because of the digital uh, transitions that we've been going through. Uh, because of ebooks, because of um, the disintegration or, and uh, reorganization of our industry, um, um, a lot of people do worry about whether or not we do have a future, um, and that's a legitimate question now, because with the merger of Random House and, and Penguin, uh, that's a concern to many of us. That's for us booksellers, that's like a marriage between Snow White and Satan. Penguin's um, publicly stated philosophy is, if these people fail, we will fail, because real books are here to stay. Um, Random House is a lot more draconian in their credit policies. Penguin's very liberal in their credit policies. Random House, who will be the majority shareholder in this uh, merger, um, has not been so kind to us. So we worry that Snow White and Satan might not be such a good marriage for us. We don't know which one's going to win out. Uh, do they want to just take our business away from us and abandon us, or, or do they realize that they will fail if we fail? And so the New York publishing industry does have a big uh, question to answer as they go through this merger process, is do you want your independent booksellers, your brick and mortar booksellers, because I would even include Barnes & Noble in there too, do you want them to survive, or do you just want to get bigger? We've always been uh, at the forefront of, of anything um, that could help us from the tech technology world. Uh, we, did, we, we got the database together back in the early 80s and went on, we're one of the first to go onto a computer system, so once you got, that was uh, we wrapped our mind around that project, then we were able to make the store more profitable. Um, but over the years, um, more, most recently, is, is that uh, in order to diversify, uh, we started our own uh, digital book-on-demand business called the Troy Bookmakers, and uh, where we make books. We literally physically make books. We, um, uh, we take the manuscript, we uh, format it into a book, we uh, uh, print the pages, we dip it in glue, we trim it up, slap a cover on it, and we make beautiful books for our local authors that want to self-publish and uh, also for some of the, uh, uh, you know, for some of the professors that want to do textbooks, uh, for people that want to do a family cookbook, you name it, but we stay, we've stayed right at the cutting edge of uh, digital printing technology. And the other uh, avenue that we've gone down to to stay on top of things is we started our own publishing company called Staff Picks Press. And uh, the inspiration for it was, of course, uh, Staff Picks. We knew that if we found a manuscript that we loved, uh, we knew that we could 
sell it. So we just had to find the right author, the right manuscript, and uh, so we're on to our uh, fourth book now, and uh, we don't uh, have a, a, you know, we don't do 20 books a year because um, I would have a nervous breakdown if we did, but uh, but we're making great, great progress. There you go. Thank you. Unfortunately, because of, you know, the fact that we've lost so many independent bookstores over the past two decades, we, we were originally, there were about 5,000 of us back in the 90s, and now we're down to you know, a couple thousand of us. Um, so there are plenty of communities that don't have an independent bookstore. Um, and I think people do know that it's a real loss to the community that they don't. Um, um, and, and if they do have one, uh, they need, need to t treasure it and take care of it and, and patronize it. And, uh, and if they don't have one, we all have websites. <laughs>